Have you ever thought, I wonder what happened to that place from my past? That movie theater, that family home, that arena? Hopefully, our urban exploring videos help bring back memories that are lost to time. If you really enjoy our videos, please consider subscribing and supporting us through Patreon. Today we're visiting a historic abandoned steakhouse in Ohio. It was founded by Joe Bissett, a man with big meaty ideas. But we'll get into more of that later. It opened in 1963 as a bar and grill, but was a big hit. So it expanded to include all the booths and tables you see today. In the late 90s, it changed owners, but continued to operate out of this location under the same name until 2008. After 45 years as a community staple, it closed. Slowly, it went vacant, then abandoned. And a while back, we had the opportunity to check out the inside. It's since been boarded up and will likely be demolished in the near future. When it actually closed in 2008, the business kept going, but it moved to a new location across town and operated there until 2013. While as you can tell, this place has seen better days, it's crazy what we find on the other floors. They left so much. It's not in the greatest part of town anymore. But it would be great if it could come back. You can see this is where people would wait for a table. Let's head back to the employee only section. You can see all the appliances in the kitchen have been removed. Lots of coolers, but I don't think I'm going to go inside. Wonder how many people or servers tripped over that step. 
Seems like a horrible place for one. You can see where they probably had a ton of tables up on this landing, and all that is left is this booth. And over here, there is a spectacular stained glass window. But it's covered up by spray-painted glass on the outside, so nobody even knows it's here. Look at all the booths. And I'm not going to say what shape the booths are in. But uh, definitely caught me off guard. These lights are huge. I bet those things weigh 200 pounds. This place reminds me a lot of the abandoned Chinese food or Chinese buffet that we visited recently that even had chips still in the buffet line like they were planning on coming back the next day. If you want to see that video, there's a link in the video description. Check that one out. It's pretty cool too. So I believe these things lit up and uh, told the servers what table was available, maybe? If you know what that's for, you let me know in the comments. I'm not 100% sure. All the seats are covered in a thick layer of mold. Oh, do I love abandoned places. But don't forget to mask up. Okay, so we've made it to the first basement. And you know what's crazy about this basement? While it looks like it just has a ridiculous amount of hot water heaters, it also has an original Frigidaire freezer. The handles on this are pretty wild. And you can see, they even have a sign up for where they kept the Budweiser. And then if we crawl around to the other side, we can see the original Frigid Air tag and the handles for these really cool old windows. I don't know what year this was, but my guess is this was original. So, 1960s. So now, we're back on the main floor, and we're actually headed up the stairs to the second floor. And here, you can see the shelves where they kept all the booze. Even a Johnny Walker Blue Label box. This door looks really old to the attic. We'll head up there next. Free gift certificates. Pretty sure they're expired.
So now let's talk about Joe's big idea. Joe introduced the world to the meat popsicle. Picture eating barbecue without silverware or the mess. Joe called it the royal ribs, and it was the signature dish. And it wasn't just limited to ribs. You could also do it with other meats, like chicken and pork loin. It was such a unique idea, Joe was granted not one, but two patents. One in 1972, and a second for a variation in 1973. Now this looks like the boss man's office. Lots more gift certificates. And an old calendar. You can see someone has stolen all of the wiring, not just a little bit of wiring, but all the way through to the transformers. Let's head up to the attic. You can see the wallpaper actually had, it looks like newspaper on the back of it. it looks pretty old. So here we've got an old crate from someone that worked at Delphi or Delco. And uh, it's like all of their work belongings, they just dumped them out here on the floor. Lots of old interesting papers. And I'd show you more, but my flashlight died. So now we're toward the end of the video and we've got something spectacular to talk about. So we found a second basement. Yes, folks, a second basement. So on this side of the second basement, you can see it's pretty empty. Let's keep moving. Barbecue King, Greenville, South Carolina. What's that, a rotisserie? But then we saw a door that had been broken through into the other side of the basement. Hmm, I wonder where it leads. Well, it's pretty ridiculous. And you'll have to wait till the next video. So don't forget 
to subscribe, hit the like button, share it on social media, and turn on notifications by clicking the bell so that you get notifications for the next video. Top five craziest things we've ever found. Stay tuned. And as always, be safe out there. I hold my breath and wish for, wish for a new place to set a new pace. And I guess we'll do it all on our own.